Greetings, St. Mark's friends. I hope this finds you well and that you are counting your blessings every day. During this time of Lent, I think many of us have decided on something that we well, will give up for Lent. I've kind of challenged myself and I, and I challenge you as well. Um, and sometimes I feel like I'm preaching to the choir here, so maybe this isn't so much a challenge as a, a reminder. Uh, but for me, it's kind of a plea to myself that in addition to giving up something, uh, I want to make a conscious effort and uh, really work hard to give something back, not just give up. Uh, we know right now there are so many people um, due to a lot of circumstances, COVID uh, specifically, um, the weather, and just just different things that have occurred that people are really hurting uh, financially, physically, emotionally. Um, and I just really want, I, I just think as Christians, if we will do our part to, to give back um, in a compassionate way that, uh, you know, it's got to start with us. So what, uh, what I would like to share with you this morning or this day is something that we, when I was teaching, that we heard a lot and we really tried to uh, put into practice. Uh, but we knew that our students uh, would not care how much we knew until they knew how much we cared. And that's compassion. Um, there's a quote that's attributed to, to different people that I've read, so I won't, I won't uh, give any credit to the author of this, but uh, the quote is, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And that's what compassion is. Um, I wanna share with you <clears throat> quite a few scripture verses here, and I'm, I'm just going to, without commentary, just kind of go through these. I, I say that. Who knows what I'll add in as I go. But I, I'll try to just read these. And then the good thing is, if you want to go back and look at some of those, being on video, you're able to do that. You can back up and pause or whatever. So uh, the first one is basically uh, when Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment? And he replied, this is Matthew 22, 37 and 38. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. That kind of, I don't even know if I need to go further. That pretty much says it all. Um, love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus uh, considered this to be uh, the second greatest commandment. James 1.27 says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Philippians 2.4, Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Proverbs 21.13 says, whoever shuts their ears to the cry of the poor will also cry out and not be answered. Proverbs 28.27 says, those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to them receive many curses. 1 Timothy 5.8, anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Colossians 3.12, therefore as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Matthew 9.36, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble 
with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So as God has promised to comfort us, we should also comfort others. And, you know, sometimes it's easy to see in a, a news story about a group that's collecting extra coats or blankets for the homeless or the needy and say, oh yeah, I've got an extra coat in my closet and then take it down and drop it off and, and drive away. That's a good thing. I, I highly encourage that. But I think really myself as, as the prime example can do more than that. Um, and it starts with our prayers. As we uh, see there are some really, really horrible things going on in this world. Uh, people being oppressed and persecuted. Um, and, and sometimes it's so far away geographically that, that we say, well, wow, I feel bad for those people. There's not much I can do about it, but there is. We can pray about it and make it a, a priority prayer and not just a passing thing, oh God, please be with those people. That's a horrible thing. But to really get on our knees and be compassionate in our, in our caring, in our, in our praying for these people. Um, there are people in our own neighborhoods that we, we probably aren't aware of, but right now there are so many people that are just in desperate need of, the, of this next stimulus check. Uh, people have lost their jobs. I, I could go on and on. I think we're pretty well aware of what's happening. Um, but I'm definitely challenging myself to step out in, in faith uh, and action and, and try to do uh, do a little better and to show that compassion that uh, has been shown to us. So that's my, that's my plea to you. Um, I know this is falling on good ears and I know some good things will take place uh, because God has asked us to be his hands and feet. So God bless you all and uh, stay safe.